good morning all and all present over here in the online guest speaker on a very important topic that is evidence based nursing first and foremost i would like to give a huge welcome and a warm thanks to our eminent guest speaker dr maharaj singh sir for taking up this and accepting our invitation today's in modern world as well as in the upcoming trends of our nursing it is very important and pivotal role which plays evidence based nursing evidence what itself we all know it is related to the proof what we give to our colleagues professional fraternities regarding practicing a quality nursing with a certain standard and this evidence will come up with the research what we do in our nursing field because research is the only one aspect through which we can prove the new concepts the new ideas and uh, the new practices which we can start up in the hospital no matter it is a government or a private hospital by revising the protocols we can start implementing those evidence based practices for the welfare and well being of our people in the community as well as in the hospital for the prevention promotion and specific protection and restoration of the health which we need for each and every person in the healthcare delivery system and that is how the human being can move from the illness to the wellness continuum of the health continuum keeping this in view i would also like to uh, tell to the students that you also have this particular topic in your syllabus and you all are into the research doing the small project works so this evidence based nursing practices will help you to understand the importance of the research where the findings can be published can be discussed and the same thing can be implemented in our nursing field in our day to day healthcare practices so with this small view of this topic i would uh, express once again a warm and a hearty welcome to our eminent guest speaker sir we are very thankful for being a part of us and going to deliver and implement a very important lecture on evidence based nursing so actually as i have already introduced that today's lecture will be on evidence based nursing and also she introduced the need of power that why actually this topic is important for all the practicing nurses as well as for the studying nurses now actually as the topic name is evidence based nursing so as students you all know that nursing basically it's in profession which basically deals with delivery of care to the patients and as you know that the care actually we deliver to patient in different aspects that is preventive promotive curative and the rehabilitative care but at the same time whatever the kind of care actually we provide at the same time we are also expecting that it should bring the better outcome in the patient either the care is of the preventive or promotive or curative or rehabilitative aspect now this better patient outcomes can come through quality care and that quality care actually emerges through the research evidences so here actually i will be talking that what is evidence as already ma'am said that evidence is nothing but actually it's a proof in simple way if we say it's in proof proof of something so something is nothing but we can say anything which we can see which we can feel which we can experience but at the same time also we see that whatever the proof we are able to feel see or experience is generated through the 
systematic process of research now actually what is evidence based nursing so here if we see as basically it's a process of making the clinical decisions and based on three components one is patient perspective another is the clinical expertization and third is the best research evidence so as i said that in order to provide basically the quality nursing care we as a nurse first of all basically when we are practicing we need to find out the problem or the question related to the patient care after finding out the problem basically we need to search for the best evidence and as we are finding out the best evidence we are taking into the consideration what is the patient problem and whether the patient is willing to take or accept that action from our side so that process basically is known as evidence based nursing now next is other another definition that evidence based nursing basically is an approach in which we as in nurses makes the quality decisions and as we make the quality decisions we are able to provide the quality care but quality decisions and provision of quality care depends on three things one is how much experience as a nurse you are having and how much evidences you are try to find out so basically when we provide the evidence based nursing basically we use one of the approach that we call as evidence based approach and this evidence based approach or evidence based practice approach basically uses up to date information that has been proven through appraisal of high quality studies and statistically significant research findings as the there are the various definitions was there for the evidence based nursing but in year 2009 scott k and max seri are actually they they found the appropriate definition for the evidence based nursing and they published it in the international journal of nursing research that as per them evidence based nursing basically it's an ongoing process so students you should know that evidence based nursing it's not a one time activity it's continuous and in which actually we have integration of nursing theory as you are reading now as in, when you are actually attending your classes your teachers are teaching you the different things for example fever so what are the nursing interventions we can take for reducing the fever that is basically the nursing theory and practitioners basically clinical expertization so actually the nurses who are working in the hospital out of whatever they have read they are actually implying it into the practice area but at the same time they are finding certain problems and they are trying to get the better evidence for this so that basically is known as evidence based nursing as stated by the scott k and maxeri that here we use the nursing theory what we are teaching at the same time what we are practicing we are clinically critically evaluating this and then based on that we are looking for the better evidences for the optimum nursing care of the individual patient now actually why we need to have a evidence based nursing so as i said that as we are providing the care but this care should bring the better patient outcomes and and in order to bring better patient outcome basically we require delivery of quality care but at the same time in order to deliver the quality patient care the burden may comes on the patient so we are looking for such kind of nursing measures 
which have a minimum health care cost or burden on the patient as well as enhancing the job satisfaction among the nurses so in order to fulfill all these ends actually we require evidence based nursing and all these four ends delivering of high quality patient care reducing of health care cost improving of the patient outcomes and improving of the job satisfaction among nurses can be fulfilled by evidence based nursing practice so that's why we need it now before going to evidence based practice if you see that first of all when the evidence based practice was introduced basically in the nursing so actually if we see the history we found the evidence long back that in 1850s and all florence nightingale actually wrote in her book notes on nursing and in that book actually she has described a framework for evidence based nursing practice and as we know it today also as well as if we talk about the literature that the term basically evidence based practice in literature made first appearance in 1996 and by that time basically what was evidence it was in consensus explicit and judicious use of current best evidence in making decisions about the care of individual patients was known as actually the evidence based practice now as we seen that the evidence based practice was introduced in the first of all in the field of nursing in the year 1850s by florence nightingale and in literature it has appeared in 1996 now who introduced actually this evidence based practice concept in nursing so basically if we see first of all basically the concept of evidence based practice was introduced in the field of medicine by the professor arch cochran he was an epidemiologist from the united kingdom and he introduced the concept of evidence based medicine and in our nursing field basically it was introduced by the florence nightingale and another person that is gordon gorjat basically he has written in book on evidence based uh, practice so these are the three a persons actually who introduced the concept of evidence based practice in the field of nursing first of all now basically whenever we do the evidence based practice in our field basically main three components as always we should keep in our mind first of all being a nurse you should possess good knowledge understanding experience then from your knowledge understanding and experience actually you will come up with research question or with patient problem that the patient is having this problem we are having this available evidences but out of that actually these are not working so we, i need to find out some best evidence so you start searching for best external evidences so that best external evidences you can search from evidence based nursing databases as well as from the evidence based nursing journals as you come up with good valid and reliable evidence at the same time take into the consideration patient values that whether this is going to accepted by the patient it is not going to affect his beliefs values culture as well as going to fulfill what expectations actually the patient is having so by keeping in your mind this way you can practice the evidence based now evidence based nursing basically it's having a process that how we can practice the evidence based practice in our field of nursing that first of all basically you need to formulate your clinical question following of that you need to search for evidence as you found the evidences you need to evaluate the each and every evidence as you evaluate the each and every evidence out of that select the best one and apply or put into the practice 
and finally evaluate its effectiveness. So actually, if you see the process of evidence-based nursing, it's almost similar with our nursing process. In our nursing process also, we follow almost similar steps. Now, actually, how we need to assess the patient and develop the clinical questions. So suppose as you are a nurse and you are providing patient care, then routinely as you are providing the care, you may be often facing with certain complex questions. When you have a complex questions, basically you don't have clear answer to their questions. Now, this evidence-based practice should begin with assessing the patient and developing your answerable questions. Now, as you have a complex question, but you don't have a clear answer to it, then actually use the PICO format. And in PICO format, basically that you have a problem in your hand, you have certain interventions also in your hand, but still the problem is same. Now you can do comparison of that and finally looking for outcomes. And this is the step one. Step two is, so step two is basically finding relevant evidence to answer the clinical questions. So once actually you have developed a clinical question, now you need to start searching. And as you are searching, you may find that there are the different sources from where you can get a information about the problem which you have in your hand. But same time, actually you should use only the sources which are well organized, are up to date and are aligning with current best nursing practices. So you need to find out such relevant evidence to answer the clinical question. Now, basically, we have a different kind of sources on evidence-based nursing databases. These are certain sources which I am listing out actually where you can find the current literature on the problem which you have selected. And these are all online sources but may require subscription from your institutional side and or individual side. These are like Cochrane Library database up to date PubMed, Shinhal these are basically some evidence based nursing databases where you can get the relevant information about the research problem or which you have about the patient problem which you have actually selected to search for the evidences as well as there are certain evidence based nursing journals also these all the journals are available online and Certain journals name just I have listed out, which are having the good, reliable evidences like UNCCS Libraries Catalog, Evidence-Based Nursing Journal, World Views in Evidence-Based Nursing, ACP Journal Club, and the Evidence-Based Health Care. Other than this, there are many more other journals are also available that also you can have a citation. Now, once actually you search for the evidence and you the evidence, next step is that to acquire evidence and validate its relevance to the patient situation. So now this is basically a very crucial time that once actually you have, have a various sources in your mind that data and available data, now you need to judge the quality which source is basically is having the good evidences, which source is result are, are actually the valid and the reliable. So for that basically one hierarchy is being established and in that hierarchy basically if you see that in that hierarchy if you see for the evidences that levels of evidence as if you see in this meta-analysis of multiple randomized controlled trial studies. Any 
information basically if you are getting from meta analysis form that is basically a result of multiple randomized controlled trial studies and these are considered as most reliable and valid results and following of that is basically the systematic reviews of randomized controlled trials only randomized controlled trials of individualized studies followed by cohort studies case control studies case reports and the experts opinions i will tell you one by one so in step 3 as i said that we need to acquire the evidence and validate its relevance to the patient specific situation after that we need to appraise the quality of evidence and decide whether to apply this evidence or not so for that this is the acronym which is been set as one i said meta analysis so in meta analysis basically how this is been considered as the strongest quality and level 7 is basically is considered as the weakest quality in level 1 actually we have evidence from multiple randomized control trials and that are been analyzed and we call these are actually the meta analysis or the systematic reviews level following of level 1 the next evidence which is considered as valid is evidence from well designed randomized control trials that are individual studies but the design which is been adopted is the randomized control trial following of that the next level of is considered as valid is that we can use the experimental studies that are well designed but do not have a randomization like quasi experimental and the pre experimental studies research results following of that level 4 is the evidence forum case control or the cohort studies cohort studies are actually these are the longitudinal studies which we do either in prospective or in the retrospective way and the results basically which we are getting from this are considered as valid and example for cohort studies if i give suppose you are assessing the patient who is normal today but having the habit of smoking so after 5 years how much risk of cancer basically he is how much risk of lung cancer he is developing that is prospective cohort study retrospective cohort study suppose any of the patients suffering two days with lung cancer and you are going backwardly and asking that you whether you had exposure with tobacco and smoking and all so that kind of evidence studies are considered at level 4 at level 5 actually any of the review which you are getting from the descriptive or qualitative studies and at level 6 we consider any result which we are getting from single descriptive or single qualitative study and any experts opinion that are not basically evidence based result proof uh, that are considered at the level 7 and that is the weakest level of the quality of evidence now once actually you have just the quality of evidence now what you can do you can apply this evidence to the patient care so as you apply this evidence to the patient care you need to keep in your mind the patient preference if the patient is willing then only you should implement it otherwise you should not poach on the patient once you have applied the evidence to the patient you have integrated actually the evidence in the patient care following up that you need to collect the data and find out the effectiveness of this care as in nursing process you know that you are assessing the patient formulating your nursing diagnosis planning certain nursing intervention then out of that you are implementing some intervention and finally you are checking the effectiveness in same way in evidence based nursing practice being as a nurse first of all actually we should select the most current problem then we should search uh, for its 
literature after searching the literature we should select the well known reliable literature from that then after that we should implement and validate it so that is the step 6 as if you see here this is a this i will show you with an example suppose you are a nurse and you are practicing in the ward and when you are providing actually the iv care to the patient you are facing some problem that the patient are getting sir infection at the iv site now you have taken this problem at your priority as after taking this problem at the priority you start analyzing the evidence start analyzing the evidence is nothing but you start searching for the literature on pediatric iv care as you start searching the literature on the iv care as i said we have evidence based nursing databases we have evidence based nursing journals so from that you can find the literature and you can analyze for its validity and reliability as the hierarchy also i stated that we are considering the most well and reliable result of the meta analysis and the systematic reviews of randomized control trials and at weaker level we are considering the experts opinions so up that you can analyze and then finally you can implement and evaluate uh, the each and every one then you can implement and finally check its effectiveness so this is the basically evidence based practice model with an example which i have shared with you now as you are a student and being a teacher suppose if we want to incalculate the habit of evidence based practice in your mind so what are the different strategies in nursing schools we can employ to teach evidence based practice to our students one strategy is assigning case studies so how actually we can develop the habit on how we can develop the knowledge among our student nurses about evidence based nursing that being a teacher we can assign some case suppose you are assigning a case of head injury now you are asking the nursing students to prepare a case study on care of patient with head injury now what a student has to do you are instructing him that you need to come up with the nursing measures which are current up to date and have been taken out from the reliable sources so what actually the student will do as you have assigned the care of patient with head injury he will start searching the literature on care of patient with head injury as we have mentioned we have developed the knowledge that from where you can get they will search and come and present it so other students also will develop the knowledge as well as the individual student other than that we can organize the journal clubs so journal clubs basically the basic purpose is sharing of up to date or updated knowledge among faculties among nursing students as well as among the practicing nurses so how general clubs can be organized that once in a month we on rotation basis we can ask the faculties to come up with some current evidences related to the care so that particular faculty will search from the sources and will present and others will develop the knowledge so as others develops the knowledge others becomes actually aware they also will start implementing into practice and if they found certain actually actually they will develop the knowledge of research another other than that we can have a clinical presentation so in case of clinical presentations we can assign the case to the students the student has to do thorough study about the patient he has to search for the evidence and present it in front of other students other than that we can organize the quiz so in case of quiz competition and all actually you can assign certain 
areas certain topics to students and ask them to prepare well actually about the current evidences on that particular areas then you can ask certain questions for example <clears throat> if i say that what is the current uh, practice of uh, providing nursing care to patients suffering with diarrhea so in the form of quiz competition so what actually the students will do they will search in the books and books actually are having certain nursing interventions but suppose if it is old edition of the book that may it has changed so as the students will come up with certain new ideas and in that way you can organize the quiz competitions on campus laboratory intensives can be organized then you can create a small work groups you can assign certain task and assignment so student will work on that as well as try to have interactive lectures uh, regarding to the practice of teaching as well as the, the practice of clinical adopt teaching research methods so by teaching research methods actually we can means actually in a regular basis when we are delivering our lecture to our students we should incorporate the current evidence based practices examples to our students then also we should have a collaboration teaching faculties actually should have a collaboration with clinical faculty uh, clinical staffs and they can share the knowledge uh, and enhance the actually skills and reading of research papers through evidence based databases as well as through the journals so as i said these are the different strategies which the nursing schools can employ to teach evidence based practice that we can assign case studies to our students they will prepare and develop the knowledge we can organize journal clubs at least once in a month we can ask the student to the clinical presentations based on evidence based nursing practice we can organize the quiz competitions on on current evidence based practice we can organize the laboratory intensives we can create a small work groups and we can assign certain projects to them we can have interactive lectures we can teach the students actually with various teaching methods while we are in by incorporating the current evidences teaching faculty can have a collaboration with the clinical staffs and they can share the knowledge as well as they can share the problems as well as enhance the knowledge research papers reading from the journals books and all as well as evidence based databases that can be used as a strategy next is what are the basic men skills basically required for evidence based practice in nursing so as i said this evidence based practice in our field of nursing we can do in our teaching side as well as in our clinical side also but either in teaching or in clinical side when we are looking for evidence based practice first of all first thing is required is critical thinking that being a nurse we should have required knowledge understanding and thinking abilities for finding out the problem and searching for the evidences second thing that we need to have a scientific mindset scientific mindset is nothing but actually we need to have a willingness to learn if we have willingness to learn obviously will work for evidences at the same time effective writing and verbal communication is required so as suppose if you are doing a research or you are communicating your research findings to someone else you need to have a good writing as well as presentation skills so you can share the knowledge another thing that is the ability to identify the knowledge gaps so suppose if i am teacher i am regularly teaching my students so what is my prime ability that is i am teaching to my students i should judge that whether the the methods which i am adopting for teaching it is effective for enhancing the learning in the students if i judge 
and found that the particular <coughs> method or strategy which i am adopting is not effective for learning in my students then i need to change myself but for changing myself i need to search for the evidences that other than this way i can adopt this method which has been found effective by someone else let me try and implement with my student also so such ability if i am having then only i will be able to fill this gap through evidence age then ability to indicate findings and to practice the relevant to question problems so actually if we see that evidence based practice is not that much easy and many things are required from the part of practitioners that they should be critical thinkers they should have willingness they should have an ability to identify the gaps as well as they should have the ability to implement and evaluate the effectiveness of these different things so that are required now here as the different things i have discussed with you that how evidence based nursing process we are following what are the different sources what are the different strategies we can adopt now i will be uh, talking about certain examples of evidence based practice in nursing first example of evidence based practice in nursing that is elevating the head of a patient bed between 30 and 45 degrees dear students let me tell you that how this concept of elevating the head of a patient emerged that actually the patients who were in the stage of semi conscious or the patients actually who were on ventilator or unconscious when we were placing these patients in supine position actually these patients were not able to swallow the secretions and because of inability to swallow the secretions these were actually entering into the this was actually entering into the tract respiratory tract and there it was causing infection pneumonia that kind of problems as well as the breathing difficulties so as this problem observed by the practitioners they thought of changing the position so as the body has changed the position and as it is stated that american sleep apnea association they did a study on positioning of patient at different angle as placing of patient at for uh, suppose 60 degree angle 45 degree 30 degree 15 degree but out of that they found much effective that when we are placing the placing the patient between 30 and 45 degree angle it support the airway and preventing the collapse as well as facilitate the respiration and now it becomes a routine practice basically for our practicing nurses the another example is implementing the measures to reduce impaired skin integrity so dear students as you all know that when the patient is on prolonged bed rest or on bed rest actually or is in longer duration uh, because of pressure there may be chances of damage to the skin and in order to prevent this certain measures as we are routinely reading also in our books that we need to turn the patient every two hourly we need to reposition the patient and actually certain pressure points like heel and elbow we need to apply soft uh, protectors and all and we should keep the skin clean and dry these are certain measures basically which we were studying as a standard of care to reduce impaired skin integrity now the current protocol 
as i found from the literature that turn a patient every 2 hours to avoid skin breakdown was a concept of previous one evidence in front practice stated that patients should be turned when and if their condition permits otherwise we should not turn the patient unnecessarily every 2 hourly so this is a change basically and has come through the evidence based now another example is implementing the techniques to improve infection control practices as we are nurses routinely we are working in the hospital side and in the hospital ward and all as you know we have a different kind of protocols for controlling the infection but ultimately patient when coming for treatment should not acquire any kind of infection from the hospital side so the policies basically which we have that we should always keep our healthcare environment clean and disinfected we should wear personal protective clothing use barrier precautions and practicing correct hand washing technique so all these ways if we adopt we are able to control the infection and these are certain examples of evidence based another is administering oxygen to a client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease so basically when this disease was diagnosed it was believed that if you provide oxygen to a copd patient it will lead to serious health issues and serious health issues like hypercarbia and acidosis and it even though it can leads to that so what was happening when patient was diagnosed with copd we were not administering the oxygen to copd patient with fear of hypercarbia acidosis and even death but today if we see a study has shown that long term if we use the supplemental oxygen in patient with copd it greatly prevent hypoxia it enhances oxygen it reduces the risk of organ failure as well as the survival rate of patient with copd so it was in just a myth and that has been changed by the research and we are practicing it the another example is early mobilization of hospitalized patients as nowadays few years back basically especially if we see in case of postpartum mothers or mothers who has recently delivered a baby we were strictly keeping her on bed but now there is a change in the concept that after within 48 hours we can ask the uh, postpartum mothers to start walking and this concept is not only for the postpartum mothers that basically if the patients who are on prolonged bed rest they are at risk of pressure wounds muscle atrophy cardiovascular weakness and immune compromised complications so newer trend says that so the newer trend says that basically just a minute so yes next is updating the methods for bathing in patient bed bound clients <clears throat> so here actually as you knows that the patients who are in bed for a long time just we were providing actually the bath to them with basin soap and water but currently as per the american association of critical care nurses this bathing of patient with basin soap and water should no longer be recommended standard of practice and actually these nurses did the research and they found that if we provide the daily bathing to bed bound patient with 2% chlor hexidine instead of soap and water fluconate it reduces the risk of infection in the blood stream as well as also they found that if we provide the bath with 2% chlor hexidine glucose every alternate day also rather than providing daily bath with soap and water it reduces 
45% chances of infection more than the bath with soap and water so this is the change basically in giving bath to in patient band bound clients next is performing appropriate patient assessments before and after administering the medications so basically this evidence based practice says that suppose any medication is been prescribed by the physician now it's in responsibility of the nurse that before administering the medication priorly she should assess the patient for example a patient is suffering with some cardiac problem or suffering with blood pressure in that case or suffering with hypertension so before administering the anti hypertensive drug it's in responsibility of the nurse that she should check her blood pressure as well as the pulse then only she should administer because sometime before, by giving by administering the medication patient temperature might uh, sorry patient blood pressure might have become down and without checking if you are again readministering it will put the patient at risk so such kind of problems has come up that blindly we should not administer every time in special situations we should check and then we should administer the medication another example is restricting the use of urinary urinary catheterization when possible so basically what is the evidence is here that in order to prevent the risk of urinary tract infections and all the the practice of standard hospital was that routinely means every 24 hourly we should change the catheter but as the nurses were doing the catheter and were providing good catheter care also after that also there was in catheter associated urinary tract infection rate was high so the nurse actually made change in the protocol that rather than providing changing the catheter every 24 hourly if we change every 48 hourly whether it brings some change so after that there was a reduction basically in the urinary tract infection rate and then it becomes a standard of practice that unnecessarily we should not change the catheter whenever there is a need only that time only we should catheterize the patient and properly we should do the care to the patient and we should replace the catheter also so these are some of the basic uh, measures which can be taken by the nurses another example of evidence based is encouraging well balanced diet as soon as possible for children with gastrointestinal symptoms suppose in patient is suffering with problem of diarrhea what our parents was saying even though we were also practicing that whenever we have such problem of loose motion and all we should eat banana we should use the rice apple sauce and the toast as a diet recommendation for the children with nausea vomiting diarrhea however now this is no more recommended because this banana rice apple sauce and toast are low in nutrients for low in nutrients and actually for healing of health good caloric diet is required so what is the change has shown that any child who is suffering with gi problem with like nausea vomiting diarrhea first of all we should provide sufficient quantity of water in the form of ors or through iv fluid and we should make the patient hydrated then we should provide a regular routine diet how much is tolerable by him so actually this will fulfill the caloric demand and patient will have a early healing so this is a change basically in the brat diet possible for children with gastrointestinal symptoms hindi mein kya hai evidence based nursing aap abhi 
क्लास रूम के अंदर बैठे हुए हैं आप अभी क्लास रूम के अंदर बैठे हुए हैं और क्लास रूम में जब आपका टीचर है वो आता है पढ़ाने के लिए तो पढ़ाने के टाइम पर कुछ चीजें हैं आप उसमें रूटीनली ऑब्जर्व करते हो कि आज की डेट में आपका जो रूम जिसमें आप बैठे हुए हैं जिसमें लिखा हुआ है स्मार्ट क्लासरूम तो ये जो स्मार्ट क्लासरूम है ये किस कॉन्सेप्ट के साथ में डेवलप किया गया क्या इसका एविडेंस रहा लेट मी टेल यू कि स्मार्ट क्लासरूम में आप आप बैठे हुए हो अभी मैं जयपुर में बैठा हुआ हूं और जयपुर में से मैं जो भी नॉलेज है इसके रिगार्डिंग मैं इस टॉपिक के रिगार्डिंग है आपके साथ शेयर कर रहा हूं तो ये एक एविडेंस हुआ कि स्मार्ट क्लासरूम को हम क्यों यूज करना चाहिए कि कोई भी अगर पर्सन है जो इतना दूर हो उसको बुलाना अगर कोई मेरे से बोलता है कि सर आपको दो दिन की छुट्टी लेकर के यहाँ आना है तो हो सकता है कि मेरे को सोचना पड़ता कि मैं आपके पास इस टाइम पर आ पाऊंगा या नहीं आ पाऊंगा आप इंस्टीट्यूट को भी मेरे एक्सपेंसेस के बारे में सोचना होता पड़ता बट जब एक एविडेंस है जो कि मिल गया है ऑलरेडी कि भाई जिस स्मार्ट क्लासरूम में आप बैठे हो वो रूटीन क्लासरूम का एक नीड है वो फुलफिल कर रही है हम फेस टू फेस एक दूसरे से इंटरेक्ट कर रहे हैं हम एक दूसरे को देख पा रहे हैं सुन पा रहे हैं और ये फैसिलिटेट भी कर रही है लर्निंग को सो दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एविडेंस बेस्ड नर्सिंग जब हम लोग कभी स्कूल में पढ़ते थे तो उस टाइम पर सिर्फ हमें चौक बोर्ड से ही पढ़ाया जाता था बट आज की डेट में अब आप आपके क्लासरूम में आप बैठे हो <coughs> वहां पे स्मार्ट बोर्ड भी लगा होगा एलसीडी प्रोजेक्टर लगा हुआ है आपके टीचर से पीपीटी से पढ़ा रहे हैं हमारे टीचर्स ने हमें किससे पढ़ाया चौक बोर्ड से पढ़ाया ब्लैक बोर्ड के ऊपर तो उसकी स्टडीज हुई कि भाई ब्लैक बोर्ड से जब आप पढ़ाते हो तो उससे क्या क्या फायदे और क्या क्या नुकसान है तो कुछ ना कुछ अल्टरनेट किया जाए मेथड्स को तो रिसर्चर्स ने स्टडीज की एंड दे कम अप विद सम अदर वेज एंड हमने देखा कि रियली इफेक्टिव है तो हमने उसको क्या कर लिया अपनी प्रैक्टिस में ढाल लिया सो दीज आर सर्टेन लाइव एग्जांपल्स विच यू आर फेसिंग एक्चुअली इन यूर रूटीन सेटिंग सेम काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग इन द हॉस्पिटल जो भी नर्सें हॉस्पिटल में काम कर रही है डेली वो केयर करते हैं डेली केयर करते करते जो भी बुक में उन्होंने पढ़ा है उसको इम्प्लीमेंट भी करते हैं बट एट द सेम टाइम उनको उसका उतना रिजल्ट नहीं मिलता जितना है तो उस केस में वो क्या कर सकते हैं कोई ना कोई रिसर्चर है उसने स्टडी की होगी तो उसके एविडेंसेस के लिए सर्च कर सकते हैं और उसके लिए मैंने आपको एविडेंस बेस्ड डाटा बेसिस सोर्सेज बताए कुछ जर्नल्स हैं जो कि बताए वहां से हम सोच फाइंड आउट कर सकते हैं फिर वहां से फाइंड आउट करने के बाद में हम उनको अपनी प्रैक्टिस में डाल सकते हैं और हम भी अगर हकीकत में लगता है कि हाँ ये बहुत ही ज्यादा इफेक्टिव है तो वी कैन मेक ए रूटीन प्रैक्टिस इन ओवर हॉस्पिटल और एट ओवर वर्क एनवायरमेंट 